Okay, thank you. Thank you for, for coming. My name is Kelly Vallejos. I'm an executive editor at the American Conservative. I am honored to open the American Conservative's third annual crony capitalism conference today. We have an amazing panel and keynote speaker uh, planned uh, for this morning. Uh, but a little about the conference and our crony capitalism initiative. It's part of the magazine's mission to promote a mainstream, Main Street conservatism. Our aim is to foster support for a genuinely free and fair enterprise economy that is more rewarding of innovation while being less reliant on government lifelines, debt, and an onerous bureaucracy and regulations, particularly those regulations that favor one industry leader over the other. Our initiative seeks to expose a culture in Washington that provides a pay-to-play atmosphere for those businesses that can afford it through lobbying and intensive campaign contributions, as well as the revolving door that puts industry at the wheel at the expense of real competition and the American taxpayer. In essence, the swamp. I can think of no better way to illustrate the Washington swamp than what we're here to talk about today. The cozy ties between big pharma, government, members of Congress, and how they hastened an opioid epidemic in this country. We have, a, like I said, a great group of people to talk about the dots that are connecting between each of those facilitators. But before, I would like to thank and introduce uh, two members of our American Conservative Board who are integral to our crony capitalism initiative at the magazine. George O'Neill, who's in the back there, has a great supporter of, of what we do at the magazine. And also C. Boyd and Gray, who is here to speak for a few moments um, about the conference and what we're gonna talk about today. Um, Boyden has served in three administrations, uh, the Reagan and both Bush presidents. He was legal counsel uh, among other posts in the H.W. Bush administration and White House counsel for George W. Bush. He also served as ambassador to the European Union from 2006 to 2007 and was a special envoy for the Eurasian diplomacy from 2008 to 2009. Today, he's a founding partner of Boyd and Gray and Associates, a law and strategy firm in Washington focusing on constitutional and regulatory issues. He will be joining us for a few remarks and then we'll move on to the rest of our program. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Kelly. Being introduced as, um, among other things, U.S. Special Envoy to Europe for Eurasian Energy is quite a unique assignment. Um, special envoys were really, really special in those days since there were no special envoys except, except me. And um, I was asked to go to a dinner that I was packing up as the ambassador um, to the um, European, uh, to, to the general commanding the European Defense Force. General Leahy, um, I should say parenthetically that there is no such thing as a European Defense Force, but that didn't seem to bother him. He commanded a house, a chef, a staff, and uh, I was invited. And as part of the enticement to get me to, to, to give up my packing, he sent me the guest list in which I was identified as U.S. Special Convoy. <laughs> so. Kelly, when you ever, if you ever introduce me again, please add that to the, <clears throat> to the list. Um, <clears throat> the question of crony capitalism is as old as, 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 as free markets have been, have been liberated. And it goes back really to, um, to Adam Smith. His biggest fear was that small, uh, group of Edinburgh businessmen would get together, form a little cartel, and think up a bunch of rules 
supposedly in the public interest, but designed really to raise barriers to entry by their competitors so they could enjoy uh, the fruits of their labors in a monopolistic situation. And we have that today in so many realms, and that's why the magazine is focusing on this as one part of it, which we'll get to and you'll hear this morning, but I just want to say it goes across the board. Uh, after Dodd-Frank was adopted, uh, supposedly designed to curb the big banks, punish them maybe slightly, and make it impossible for another bailout to occur. Um, Jamie Dimon, the chairman of, of uh, J.P. Morgan, described uh, Dodd -Frank, the Dodd-Frank law as his moat. And he didn't mean moat in his eye. He met M-O-A-T around his castle to protect him from competition. Um, when the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, Cordray, uh, which was Elizabeth Warren creation, um, which, which has no responsiveness to the political process and can create its own little monopolies, um, they spent 200 and something million uh, upgrading their office space. And they don't have to worry about Congress because they're paid for by the Fed. The Fed just prints the money and gives it to them. So they're beyond the power of the purse. But they did testify, Cordray did testify, and he was asked oh, uh, who was in charge of this rather lavish um, renovation. And his response was, what does it matter to you? And now, I and my three brothers were never so insolent to our parents uh, as, as Cordray was to his bosses. And uh, that's what this is all about. It's, it's the, the existence of this pattern, which has metastasized in the last 20, 30 years, and it's bipartisan, I hate to admit. Um, this pattern is what I think is the main cause of our current discontent. I mean, people can think what they want about Trump, but Trump didn't cause all this. He is, he's a product of it. He's, he's trying to do something about it, but he, he, he didn't cause it. It's been building, it's been building. And you've seen it in the military industrial complex. You've, you've seen it, which makes it impossible for Congress to exercise, not impossible, but very difficult for Cong Congress to exercise its power over over starting wars um, because the military industrial complex likes wars. Uh, it's good for them. Uh, so we have this across, we have this across the board. Um, you look, for example, at Boeing. Is that, a, is that another example of where they've overwhelmed or formed this nice little cozy relationship with the FAA um, uh, in a moat-like fashion to keep competition at bay? Is that is it part of the cause of the problems they're having now? I don't know. I think so. It, it already looked at. <clears throat> is the opioid crisis uh, part of the problem of Big Pharma overwhelming <clears throat> the Food and Drug Administration and doctors and whatnot to, to, to push out these very, very addicting drugs? When I had serious heart surgery, they were throwing OxyContin at me. All I wanted was a sleeping pill. I couldn't get one. Um, but OxyContin, so I said yes to one little dose of OxyContin because it was a good sleeping pill. But sleeping pills, is, you know, it's, it's, uh, across, it's, it's, it's across the board. You see it, um, you see it in, in, in antitrust. Even today, uh, it's, it's um, front page news in, in the Washington, uh, well, not the Washington Post, but the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. 10 Democratic State Attorney General blocking, suing to block the Sprint T-Mobile merger, which would make a third competitor to the two basic, or two basic monopolists, uh, Verizon and, um, and AT&T. I have nothing against either of those companies, but they enjoy a very, very comforting existence without having to worry about a nettlesome third person. Um, now, why would you want to block something that would, that would add to the discomfort, the competitive discomfort of uh, the two giants. I, I don't understand why, especially since this would uh, be a big advance in 5G te technology, which is, which is the problem with 
Huawei, uh, but it is the next generation, and it is in itself uh, disruptive. Um, it is thought that you need a certain number of competitors to have a, uh, a competitive market, and sometimes it's the rule of four. There are, they're, they're very serious about this. Um, but it is good, it is better to have more than one. And yet the Food and Drug Administration, which you're going to hear most about today, uh, it doesn't work that way. If there is an unmet need for uh, some illness, the FDA will uh, really accelerate the approval process, showing that they know how to do it when they want to, really accelerate the approval process for the company that looks like it, it's, it's the first mover. And once that company is successful in getting approval, it's got a monopoly. And once the need, unmet need, is met, the FDA kind of floats away and doesn't do anything about helping create competitors to um, the monopolist. So there's a disconnect, even within government, about what should be done. And, and this is, a, I think, a very, very difficult situation to um, fix. <coughs> it is thought that I'm a lawyer, so I take a legal view of all this, that perhaps the best way is to get Congress back into the game, because they, they're really sort of AWOL on a lot of these issues. They just, won't, they just won't pass anything. They turn it all over. They pass statutes that say nothing, give no guidance. The receiving regulatory agencies just get bloated making up what the law is, uh, in effect telling Congress what the law is, when Congress is supposed to be telling them what the law is. And um, it makes for uh, a huge con uh, uh, combination of growing regulatory power with growing private sector power joined together to uh, protect both of their monopoly positions as regulators and as um, businessmen. So I don't want to go too much further into this, but, it, but I do want to emphasize that I think you can see it <coughs> in practically every, every walk of I was having dinner last night with <coughs> one final note with Senator Scott, new senator from Florida, former businessman, been in health care. Uh, he says that if there were uh, more transparency about price, competition about price, you can, you, if, if you are really interested in, 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 in knowing the cheapest hotel room, what is it, Travago, or, or, or the cheapest auto loan, or the cheapest airfare, you can get it in minutes off of this machine. The cheapest uh, hip replacement, forget about it, forget about it. Um, so the president's trying to open up, Alex Azar at HHS is trying to open up uh, pricing tr um, transparency. Um, Scott says that if we had full transparency and competition, prices would be at least 50, a third to 50% to lower. And if that were the case, just think of the, think of the impact that, the beneficial impact that would have on our debt, uh, on our debt situation to say nothing of, of our better, of our better health. So this is a serious issue. It's about big business making big money off of big party uh, uh, support, and it's both parties. I, this is not something which, uh, which I think there should be a difference about. And uh, so I hope that you will come to future conferences of this kind and see how this develops in the, <coughs> in the real world. So thank you for coming.